Welcome back. This is lesson three of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 11. And in this lesson, we will talk about taking a churn prediction model we developed in session five, and we will deploy it with KSurf. For that, we want to train a model again, and we need to use a specific version of scikit-learn for that, and a specific version of Python. Because SK server that we have in KSurf, it uses a specific version of scikit-learn, a specific version of Python. So we want to make sure that the model we train matches that version. To find out what version we need, it's actually not that easy. We need to go to KSurf GitHub repo. Um, there is no easy way to find this in documentation, but since we have code, we can see in the code which version is used. So and in the code, we have this SK learn server. This is the source code for the server. And there is also a Docker file for this SK learn server. So we can just go there to this Docker file and we can see that it uses Python 3.7. And then it does a pip install and then it goes to this directory. Let us also go to this directory, SK learn. This and I think we need this uh, setup.py file. Um, that's yet another way of specifying dependencies in Python is using this setup.py file. And we see that here we have install requires and we see that it requires scikit-learn of this specific version. This is not the same version of scikit-learn that we used when we were training the model in session five. This is also not the same version of Python that we used in session five. Remember we used Python 3.8. But anyways, what we need to do now is we need to create an environment where we have this version of scikit-learn and where we have that version of Python. So the easiest way of doing that would be to use Conda. With Conda, we can easily create an environment and specify a version of Python and specify the version of scikit-learn. With uh, pipenv, we can and easily manage versions of libraries, but with versions of Python, it's a bit more tricky. I think for this simple case, I would just go with Conda and create an environment there. So let me do that. For that, we use command Conda create, and then this will be the name of the environment. So I'll call it Py 3.7, Second uh, Learn. The version of Second Learn we need to install is uh, 0.20.3. Yes, so this is the name. So now we need to specify the version of Python we need, it's 3.7. Now we can also list all the dependencies we want to install. So it's scikit-learn 0.20.3. Then we will need pandas. And also what is um, I think important is if we go to the source code of scikit-learn server and to go here to model, it actually uses job leap for loading the model. It uses job leap load instead of pickle load. It's very similar. Pickle and job leap are doing almost the same thing, but we need to install it as well. So job leap. I think that's all the libraries we need. Scikit-learn. When installing Scikit-learn, we will get NumPy. Pandas job leap. That just should be enough. So let's create it. If let's say if I didn't have Conda, then I would need to use something like pyenv. Pyenv, I think it's called pyenv. This is Python version management and it allows to have multiple versions of Python on the same computer. For example, right now I used Conda, it's actually mini Conda, and then I use Conda for installing Oh, yes, I use Conda for installing a specific version of Python, uh, creating a virtual environment with this specific version of Python. Instead, I could also use something like PyEnv. But since I already have Conda, it's just simpler to use Conda. Let me activate it. So now if I do which Python, this is a Python coming from this new environment. And if I do Python minus capital V, this is the version of Python. So this is Python 3.7. I think if I do Python and import scikit-learn, and then do a second learn version. Just want to make sure that this is the version we need. So yes, indeed, this is the version we need. It's here. Actually, I want to use Jupyter as well for training a model. Yeah, maybe let's do it without Jupyter. I think um, it will be faster because now I will need to install Jupyter here and yeah, it will just take a bit of time. So let me create a file here that I will call churn train.py. And now I will go to the course repo here in, I think in chapter five, I think we have it in the code. So in this, we have this thing here. Let me copy that. I don't need that. We just need tick vectorizer and logistic regression. And also this is the pre-processing. Remember that actually pandas, instead of using a path to local file system, it can also use a web address, a URL. So let me go to, this is chapter three. And yeah, we have this data set here. URL and then I'll just use that. So then Panda will just use the URL. I don't need to download it. Yeah, I will train the model on the entire data set. I don't need to do splitting. And let's use only a subset of that. So we'll use tenure, monthly charges, 
uh, from numerical features and let's use contract variable from categorical features. So this will be the features that we will use for training this model. So this is the code we need for that. And C, I think 1.0 was the best C and we just needed data frame. So this way we will fit a model. And now at the end, yeah, we actually do that. So we save this. So at the end we save it. Here instead of pickle, we need to use job lib. Let me import it, import job lib. And to save with job lib, it's actually simpler. Job lib dump, variable we want to save, and then the name. So the name will be model.joblib. And this is actually, we have to have this name. Uh, let me show you why. I'm looking at the code of scikit learn server. And in this code, we can see that the model base name has to be model. An extension has to be either joblib, pickle.pkl, or pickle. So a model has to have this file name. And any other file name will not work. You can actually check in the code that it's trying to use this particular name. I was trying to figure out why my code didn't work. And then I had a different name. The name of my model was something like churn.bin or something like this. And this SK learn server just wouldn't be able to load this. This name is kind of hard coded there. The name has to be model.joplib. And that's it. That's the code for training the model. There is one more thing. Again, let's go back to this scikit-learn server model.py file. We have this method predict, and in this method, we see that it's doing self.model.predict. It just takes the model and runs predict on that. The problem with that is we actually have two things. So first we have a dictionary vectorizer. We need to do this transform, and then we need to do model.predict not just this, right? So we need to have two things. But here in the server, it assumes that there is only one thing. In order to solve this, what we can use is scikit-learn pipelines. Actually, we covered scikit-learn pipelines during midterm project in one of the office hours videos. I think it was the last one. And in pipeline, we have only one object. And then on this object, we can just call predict. We'll first apply dict vectorizer, and then it will apply logistic regression. This is something we want to use here. So we want to train a pipeline. We don't want to fit first a dictionary vectorizer and fit a logistic regression. We just want to create a pipeline object that contains dictionary vectorizer and logistic regression and then fit it. So let's create pipeline. We need to import it. Second learn pipeline import pipeline. So we import pipeline and then here the syntax is first we need to give it a name. Let's call it vectorizer and then put this thing there. And then the second step will be the actual model. And I need to put this thing there. And this is an old version of scikit-learn. I think here we also need to specify a solver. If we don't specify, it will complain. So let's use a lib linear solver. I don't need this max iteration. And then we need to fit our pipeline. And then the input to the pipeline will be these dictionaries. The dictionaries will go to vectorizer and then vectorizer will create a feature matrix and then feature matrix will go to the model. And here the Y part, yeah, we don't define it explicitly. We just need to use out of frame churn values. Let's see if it works. This is the code that we need for training our model. And let me run it. I am in the right directory. So then I do Python churn train. I should have added logs. I think it cannot parse it because I gave wrong URL. So I need to add row through here. Then it actually fetches the file, not a web page, GitHub web page. Okay, it worked. I should have added some logs here. Let's take a look at the size. So the size of this thing is 1.4 kilobytes. It sounds about right. So this is our model. And this is the model we want to deploy with KSERF. So now let's open this. Iris example YAML that we created previously. I will copy it now. I'll just click here, copy. And then I'll call it churn service. And then in churn service, so let's call it churn. And then we have this thing. This is the name. When we will do kubectl get inference service, then we will see a row with churn there. So it will be our service. And we will also use this in the name. So it will be something like churn.default.example.com, something like that. And then we have the other thing. So this is location. This is the place where the model is stored. This example model is stored in Google storage. We can, of course, store it in S3. 
And this is something we will do in the last video of this session when we will deploy things to EKS, to AWS. But for now, we just want to do things locally. So we don't want to create a bucket in S3 or a bucket in a Google storage or anything like that. And it's not easy to do it from a file from your local system, because remember, we are in a Kubernetes cluster. So in a Kubernetes cluster, there is no thing called local file system. And actually, let me go to docs and we will see in the docs what are the possible options and docs. Then in the docs, I think we have samples here and in samples, we have something like storage. And in storage, we have multiple options. Storage could be S3 location. It could be Google Cloud. It's not included here, but GS is uh, Google Storage. Then Azure, PVC is persistent volume something in Kubernetes. This is not an easy thing to set up locally, or at least I didn't find an easy way of setting this up. If you find an easy way of doing this, maybe you can just write about this in Slack and then I will include a link. But what I want to do is use this URI. The URI is just using a URL for downloading, for loading a model. Here is an example of how you can use inference service with saved model from a URI. URL. Actually, we can pass a URL to this storage URI thing and it will just download that. So here is an example, also similar to what we are doing. In this example, they are training a support vector machines model. And then actually they say that it has to be scikit-learn 0.20.3. This is the version we actually used for our model as well. And then they say, this is how you should save the model using droplet dump. This is also how we did this. And then they say, now take this model and save it to some repo in GitHub. And then you can just refer to this GitHub using row through. This is quite simple to do, and you can do that. Just commit it to your GitHub repository and then get the URL. We will do something even simpler. In Python, there is a thing called HTTP server. So let me do it in a different terminal. So I'm in this directory, so I have this model joblib, and then I can run Python HTTP server that will serve all these files in this directory. So all these files will be available for me to download. So let me just show you. Actually, you don't need to install anything. It comes with Python. You just need to execute this uh, Python minus M HTTP server. So it started something on port 8000. So let's go to this port localhost 8000. And what we see is we see all the files that are available in this directory. So we can just use this model.joblib. So let me save it and we can replace it here. One thing though, so we have localhost here. When we deploy to Kubernetes, Kubernetes has no idea what this localhost is and what it refers to. We need to one extra thing. So we need to know the IP of this computer. If you're on Linux, you can do IF config. On Windows, it will be IP config. Yeah, I need to install it. So let me install it and let me run it. And it tells me what are the IP addresses of this computer. And oh, we have quite a few of them. So I think we need this F0. It's like Ethernet 0. I don't know. I hope it will work. So let me take that one and put it here. Yeah, let's let's test it. And um, what I'll do now is I'll just do kubectl apply minus F. And then I will do churn service. Actually, we don't need this uh, environment anymore. Let me deactivate it. Maybe it's Conda deactivate. Okay. Now I do kubectl get pods, and then we have scikit-learn iris predictor that is already running. So let us quickly check the logs to see that everything is working as expected. So I want to do kubectl logs and then the name. Yeah, so it says there are multiple containers for this pod. We need to select one of the two. So I will select the case of container. This is what we need. And I also want to add less because there will be a lot of logs. I see some warnings here. These are not important warnings. I think this is the wrong model. I actually wanted to have churn one, right? So let me copy that. Again, we see these warnings. We can ignore them, I guess. And yeah, it says that it registered the model. So it was able to download the model and it was able to register the model. What we can do just quickly to double check that everything works, we can log in to this pod and see that the model is indeed there. For that, uh, we already have the pod name. So we do kubectl 
uh, exec uh, minus it, then the name of the pod. We also need the case of container here. Yeah, because uh, on this pod, we have two containers. This can also happen. We didn't cover that in the previous session. In the previous session for a pod, we always had one container, but there could be multiple. So we need a container, case of container, and then we execute bash here. Now we are on a pod. We are in this slash directory, so in the root. Now we need to go to mnt and then models. This uh, slash mnt slash models, this is the place where kserve puts models, and we have our model here. And now if we just execute Python, and in this Python we can import job leap and do model job leap load uh, model dot job leap. Uh, yeah, so this is where the warnings are coming from. So when we are loading the model, we get a bunch of warnings. I don't know if it's something we should worry about or not. So it's deprecation warnings. Let's ignore them for now. And then in this model, let me select a couple of examples, create another terminal. And I just want to start IPython here. Where is our train? I want to load this thing. This thing, I want to execute that. Let me do pip install pandas. I don't know why I don't have pandas here, because I think I'm not in the environment where I already have pandas. Okay. pip install circuit learn. There is a new circuit learn now. Yeah, here it's not important that what I want to do now is just to get a few examples that we can use for testing this model. Finally, it works. And then I want to look at the dictionaries. Let me take the first one. This is the first example that we will use. And let me take, um, I don't know, this one, for example. So this will be the examples that we want to test. For example, I will take this one uh, or X. It will be just one observation. I do model.predict X and we get a prediction. Or what if I do model predict proba? Then I get probabilities. So it works. We were able to verify that if we log into this machine and we load this thing, everything works. Now let us test it. We already have this iris test. What I want to do is I want to create a copy and then I will call it churn test. And then a service name here will be churn. The rest will stay the same. Header is also the same. And the actual request I want to change, it will be these two things that I just copied. So it will be the instances that we send for scoring. Okay, I need a comma here because this is a list with two elements. Have two clients here, two customers. One customer is on yearly contract who's been for 34 months with us and this is how much they pay. And then another client is on monthly contract and has been for 13 months with us. So let's score these clients, this time sending a request to Kserve. For that, I'll just do Python churn test, and we get predictions. And we see that predictions are zeros. So we do not get probabilities, we get hard predictions. So we get zero meaning that this customer is not going to churn, and this customer is not going to churn. These are not probabilities. The reason for that is if we go to the source code, it's a Kserve, a sklearn server source code, we see that it actually is doing dot predict. So it's not doing predict underscore proba, it's doing predict. And that's why we are getting these results. That's a bit annoying because I usually want to see probabilities, not uh, hard predictions. And that's why what we can do here is we can modify this file and we can replace this predict with predict underscore and then use this modified code for serving our model with kserve. And what we can also do here is um, Remember that um, that we depend here on a pretty old version of scikit-learn and also a pretty old version of Python. We can use a more recent version of Python and we can use a more recent version of scikit-learn. And this is something we will do in the next video. So in this video, we saw how to get our model, how to save this model. So we used scikit-learn pipeline. So we train this pipeline, we save the model, and we serve this pipeline with kserve. And now we want to modify it a little bit and create a different image for serving scikit-learn models. And this is what we will do in the next video. So see you soon.